Hello there. This video is all about previewing the Shape Builder tool. We're gonna take the drawing we did earlier. This one. And do this to it. What do we do? Okay. We cast some shadows. Can you see? Before. After. We cast some shadows on the penguin using a real quick and easy tool. Using the Shape Builder. We also did some stuff with the eye there where it's kind of a pie shape cut out of the circle. If you have tried Illustrated before. And you've missed around with the Pathfinder. And that was tough. This is a replacement for it. It is awesome. You love it. It's been far too much time hoping this up. Let's just jump inches and learn how works. Alright. To get started. Let's go to File. Let's go to Open. And in your Exercise Files. There's one cool Shape Builder tool. We want the one that says 1. Shape Builder 2 1. Not particularly exciting. We just got some shapes. Now. These are nothing special. Just like we did in the last videos. Just I drew some circles. And some squares. And a star. Now. Where the shape builder is quite cool. We're gonna just learn the basics here. And then. We're gonna go back and do what you saw at the beginning there where you kind of add some shadows and. So. When that all selected. So. I grab my black arrow. I've drawn a box all the way around it. Or you can hold shift. And click one. Try clicking them all. Either way. Once you got the ball selected. We want the shape builder tool. It's this one here. Notice a couple of ways to use shape builder. So, by default. You can kind of see my cursor there has a little plus. Okay. And what that allows me to do. Is these are two separate shapes. What I can do is click in here. Hold. Drag. 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 And kind of like clicking my mouse. Holding. And drawing a line in between all three of these. And watch this when I let go. It magics them all together. So now. If I go back to my back arrow. Click off in the background. This is just one shape that's all been joined up. We're gonna undo. I'm gonna select them all again. And I'm gonna show you some other things it does. So. Shape Builder. Okay. By default. It's got the little plus. But if I hold down the Option key on my Mac. Or Alt key on a PC. Can you see it changes from a plus to a minus. And now. Let's me do things like this. I want to delete this trunk here. Just kind of snips a wall out where they overlap. If you've ever tried doing that with the Pathfinder tool. Maybe you've used Illustrator in the past. Man. That was a pain. So. Clicking and dragging across things. Joins them up. Holding down option on a Mac. Or on a PCs. Allows you to click and delete things. Super handy. I'll show you its other really good use. So. I'm gonna draw a big rectangle across all these guys. Just because I wanna show you something. So. I've drawn a rectangle. Gonna grab my black arrow. Gonna select all of them. I'm gonna jump to my shape builder tool and does another good thing. Rather than just joining up and removing things. You can color shapes where they all overlap. Cuz remember this rectangle's just a rectangle. Okay. I wanna color some intersections. So back to my shape builder tool. Go to my properties panel. And I'm gonna select them all. Black arrow. Then here. I can pick a fill color. So. I can say. Back to my swatches maybe. I'm gonna pick blue for no good reason. I'll pick for another no good reason. And what we can do. Is click it to drop it back inches and now. Look what happens. Look. Magic. I can just color bits where they overlap. Now. You might not find this amazing. I do. It's just super quick and easy for coloring vector. I can pick different colors. So instead of trying to joint them. And break them apart. And make them complete shapes. I can just click a fill color and just click on one of these separate shapes. Now. If you feel totally underwhelmed by this tool. It's because I got a simple exercise here. Just to get the basics going. So. 
remember, click, and hold, and drag across to join things. Hold down the option key, or up key on a PC to minus things. You can drag across with minus as well, to minus big chunks. And remember, with nothing held down, I can just pick a fill, and then, just click on them to color. So, I'm gonna close this down, and we're gonna open another file. So, I'm not gonna save it, because we didn't do anything very exciting. Some terrible colors there. What I'd like you to do now, is get a file, get it opened. I want you to open shape build it too. So, this exercise here, we're gonna do some more practical uses that Builder 2, and hopefully, you'll see the value then. First thing I wanna do before I get started. Black arrow. I click on my sky. This is kind of big grey box in the background here. What I wanna do is something unrelated to the Shape Builder tool. But often useful when you've got this background color. I wanna put it on its own layer and lock it. So it's not getting in the way of me working on my penguin here. So, with it selected, let me go to my layers panel. I'm gonna make a brand new layer. That's this little turned up page here. Create new layer. Of the top all the way up here. It's giving me the thing called. Layer 3. I'm gonna double click the word layer 3. Gonna call this background. Just to give everything a name. Is where all my drawing is. So I'm gonna double click layer 1, and this is gonna be my drawing. So, background has nothing on it now, it's a layer with nothing on it. What I'd like to do, is put the sky on it, and then lock it. So, to do that, black arrow, make sure the sky is selected. You can see this little blue dot here. Okay, that means, that, that's indicating that it's on this layer here. To move it to the background layer. Click and hold this little blue spot. Until he goes to this layer. That just says. I've dragged him from drawing to the background layer. The trouble with the background layer. It is above everything else. You can kind of see it up here. You see background first. Then drawing underneath. And remember that template we had right underneath at all. To change that. Grab background. Click hold and drag the word. You can see these little lines up here everywhere. It's kind of a weird like. So click and hold drag the weird background until it appears just underneath the drawing there. You might have to practice that a couple of times. If it goes wrong, go to edit, undo, and see if you can get it into the right position. So how do I know this is on the background layer? See that eyeball? Turn it on, turn it off, Turn it on. Turn it off. So, I know that's the background layer. It's underneath. I'm gonna click this little lock icon like I did for the background. What it means now, is if I try to move it. I can't. Alright. Next thing I wanna do, is just make sure I'm on my drawing layer. That's the one I'm gonna work on. I'm gonna go back to my properties panel. Alright. So what I'd like to do, is I'm gonna change this eye. It's gonna go from content penguin. I'm gonna hit delete on my keyboard. I'm gonna give him a different kind of eye like you saw at the beginning there. I'm gonna grab the ellipse tool. I'm gonna draw a nice big ellipse. Holding down shift to get it to be perfect. I'm gonna give it a fill color. I'm gonna give it no stroke. What I wanna do is a second circle. So, it's common in cartoons to kind of have that sliced out eye. Okay. So. I'm drawing another ellipse. Holding down shift. It doesn't matter which color it is. Cause we're gonna delete it. But I'm just making it blue. So it's easier for you to see. I'll move back to my selection tool. Gonna grab the center of it. And just kind of overlap it there. So. It's kind of half off. I'm gonna slice that out of the eyeball, to make it look like a kind of a reflection. So, I'm gonna select both. Go to my shape builder tool, and what was the key how do you remember? Down to delete things. That's right. It's the option. And I can say, you go, you go, 
And the cool thing about that now, you see how that was. Got a cookie getter, I got my black arrow. Like a diagram, and you can see it's a whole cut out of it. So, I'm gonna hold shift, grab the edge, and get it to a penguin -y size. Eyeball size, you can decide on how big you want this eye. All right, up to you, or is it gonna be? Yeah, all right, it's enough. So let's minusing. We kind of minus that circle from that circle. What I wanna do is join something. So I'm gonna click with my black arrow with the white belly. I'm just gonna drag it up here. So it kind of overlaps. I'm gonna kind of get it so it matches up with the nose. Cause that's the kind of look that I want. I want it to be cool. Kind of one. So. I'm gonna click this. Hold shift. And click this at the center. So. They're two super units spot. But using my handy dandy shape builder tool. I can drag across holding nothing down. Just drag across them. Kind of draw a line through all three. And papers though. It's one unit. Cool. And remember the other use for coloring parts. We're gonna add like fake shadow. So let's grab the line segment tool. And I'm gonna draw a line. Let's zoom in a little bit. So you can see. I'm gonna draw a line segment that kind of goes from there down to. You can draw it all the way through. Let's draw it all the way through just so you can see what to do with the leftover bits. So. Drawing a line through it. I'm gonna grab my black arrow. And I need to click both the nose and this line. Your line might have a big thick stroke on it. That's fine. It doesn't matter. What we need to do is have that selected. Hold shift. And click the nose. So. You got both selected. Back to my handy dandy shape builder tool. Remember for coloring. We need to have the shape builder selected first. Then go to fill. Okay. Then pick a color. I'm just gonna pick a kind of a lighter gray. And I'm just gonna click on this. Maybe a slightly darker version. It's meant to be light hitting his beak. Anyway. So. It's worked. I colored it. But this is an overlapping hanging bit. Now. Remember. What key to hold down to remove things. It's alt on a PC. Option on a Mac. And I can just click on it. Cool. Love that stuff. Next thing I wanna do is the same with this. And it's just repeat. So. I'm gonna grab my line tool. I'm gonna draw like a little highlight that kind of goes through here. Shift click them both. Now. What you would have noticed there or might not have noticed. Is that I started using a shortcut. And I'm gonna show you just because shortcuts are great. So. I was on my line segmental. I drew it through here. Then I wanted to go back to my move tool. And the move tool. If I hover above it. Can you see it has a little V in brackets. That just means that if I click my V key on my keyboard. So it's not on there now. Watch. This big E jumps. Okay. If I want to go to my shape builder tool. It's a weird one. It's shift plus M I use it all the time because I use this tool all the time. Okay. Shift plus M so if you're using the pencil tool all the time, you can see in it. I don't use the pencil tool very often. So, I don't even know what that shortcut is. But I know V is the move key. I know Shift plus M is the quick selection tool. There's the shape builder tool. I know P is the pin tool. T is the type tool. Just the stuff you use very often. Just hover above it, and it will give you the shortcut. Some of them don't have some, because they just don't get used very much. Alright, so, V key, I've got them both selected. Shift plus M to my shape builder tool, of that dark gray, like it wants. Hold down my alt key, I'm gonna pick a fill color, my friend or option key on a Mac. One more cache shadow. And then we'll do one more special trick that the shape builder can do. So don't leave just yet. So first. I want to join these two fellows together. So I'm gonna hold shift. Click both. Go to my shape builder tool. 
draw a line through them, throw one unit, and what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna duplicate it. So, I'm gonna go back to my black arrow here, I'm gonna copy it, using edit copy, and edit paste. So, I've got this little speech bow, but it's built out of, so, what I'm gonna do, it's very clever and tries to kind of line is I'm just gonna offset it a little bit. Now, because my smart guides are on, everything up, which is exactly what I want. What I might do is, do something like that where it's kind of just down a little bit. So now, what I wanna do, is I'm going to select both. So, shift, click both. If you're not sure if you got both, just kind of move them, and then undo it to go back. I use this for that kind of vector cost shadows all the time. We're gonna use the same trick. Pick a fill color. We'll use that lighter gray. That doesn't work. Unless you're on the shape builder tool. I was on my section tool there. So, when I changed my fill, it just changed everything. First, pick your fill color. And then, okay, get your black arrow. I've got all this junk left over. I don't need him anymore. Delete. A bit better. You get what I mean. Right? So, I use it to cast the shadow. Down the bottom here. So, I promised you one other little trick of joining with this shape builder tool. It allows you to do cool things like this. Grab your white arrow. We've been everything needs to go. The white arrow is for make sure you're on your shape builder over here. Just click on that once. This thing here. I used him just to kind of get that the walls a bit bright. There's a weird thing I'm not sure where he came from. I'm gonna hit delete. He's gone. You can do with the shape builder tool. Is that. Remember when this tail was separate from the back. Using the black arrow quite a bit. The black arrow is perfect for moving big lumps around the whole thing. If I use the white arrow. Moving a little part within the lump. Okay. So, let's say, it is here. If I use the black arrow, remove this comma. It moves everything. Okay. But if I grab the white arrow, click on the corner once, then try and drag it. I get kind of little bits of individual control. And we'll look at that a little bit more when we use the pencil. But for the moment, the cool thing about it, is it says, I'm gonna click on here, and you get this corner radius. Can you see it? A little dot on the inside of the angle. I can click and drag it up, and I get these kinds of nice curves. So, the same thing for the gray one. Click and drag him up, and get this nice kind of angles going on. You can do the same for this store here, and back click it with the white arrow. It's called the direct selection tool. Okay, white arrow, you might just zoom in a bit, if you found it a little hard to work on. Grab that, and just tuck him in, cool. So, you got any points that you are like. I like them, but I just want them to be curved. Curved tool, they are cool camera options, and they are awesome. Alright, so that's our penguin, with some cast shadows, and some holes cutting things. It's called the Shape Builder tool. I should finish it there. But I'm not. I'm gonna grab the Line tool. And I'm gonna cast a shadow. I don't know in the water from the land. Okay. Holding Shift grab them both. Like a fill collar. Remember. This is not gonna work. Okay. We've got to have an undo. Got the Shape Builder tool first. I'll leave it in there. Because you'll do the same thing. I do it all the time. I should know what I'm doing. I'm gonna pick color from my switches. And now, I'm gonna click it in there. Click off from the backgrounds. Black arrow. It's cool. It all kind of soothes. Except for this thing where we drew. I wanna delete him so bad. Bye. We'll come back later. And I will show you how to give him a bit more flavor using something called brushes. But for the moment, we're gonna move on to the next video where we create a kind of custom logo. What I really wanna do is show you how the Shape Builder tool works. When we're not just drawing penguins, but when we're working, say, 
with icons or logos. And we'll do that in the next video. MD was with you here on Jibzilla.